Throughout the series, you have seen and used functions already, but in this video, I'm gonna dive deep into what functions are, their benefits, and how we can write and call them. In order to understand the benefits of functions, I'm gonna use an analogy of writing a recipe. Let's say tonight I want to cook for my family. I'm gonna do three dishes. I'm gonna make some lasagna, I'm gonna make some spinach and cheese, and then I'm gonna finish with some dessert, maybe some cheesecake. But for someone like myself, I don't really know how to cook. So the first thing that I would do is that I would go to Google and then I would search for the recipes of these three dishes. Let's say that the result that comes back is one full page of three recipes all grouped together, three sets of ingredients and three sets of steps grouped together and you cannot figure out which is for which dish. That would be very confusing, but usually actually recipes are not written that way. They're written separately based on each of the dish, right? Each of the recipes. And the reason that they're written that way is because one, it's so much easier to read and understand and you know exactly which ingredients and which steps belong to which dish. The second one is that if you were to do something wrong with a specific dish or you forget a certain ingredient, you know exactly where the problem is and you can go straight to figuring out how to solve that problem. And then the third one is that let's say your cheesecake is just amazing and then you tell all about it to your friends and your friends are like, hey, can you make some for me? You know exactly which recipe that you need to follow and you can just pick that specific recipe and then make it over and over again for your friends and your family. The benefits of writing a recipe separated by its own dish is exactly the same as the benefits of writing functions. Functions are essentially commands that are grouped together based on its specific functions. And the benefits of grouping functions that way is that one, it's easy to read and actually it's easy to write too. You can organize your thoughts of like what you're supposed to code based on the functions of each of the parts of the program that you want to write. The second piece is that if you were to do something wrong, if your program says that there is some error, you will be able to figure out a lot more easily if you know that like, hey, it's because of this function, it's because of these commands that are under these functions that are doing something wrong, right? And then you can go straight and fix those problems. And then the third piece is the reusability, right? You can reuse the functions over and over again in your program without having to rewrite them multiple times. Now, let's look at syntax for writing and calling functions. I'm gonna separate the syntax in two categories. The first one is functions with inputs, and the second one is functions without inputs. First, you need to give it a keyword, and then the keyword that you give is the word function, and then you need to give it a name. The name should have something to do with the functions of those commands. And then you have a parentheses. And for functions without inputs, you just leave those parentheses blank. And then within the curly brackets, you would put the commands, the instructions that you want to call when you call that specific function. As for calling functions, it is as easy as writing the name of the function, a parentheses, and for functions without inputs, you just leave it blank and then you just need a semicolon. Now let's talk about the second type. For functions that require inputs, you need to put values within the parentheses. For writing functions, we call these values parameters, while for calling functions, we call these arguments. The number of inputs that you want to put in each function really depends on what's suitable for the function that you're writing. An example of a function that requires inputs is an ellipse function. So an ellipse function requires three or four parameters or arguments, which is what? X, Y, W, and H. So X and Y are parameters that require you to put in arguments that will specify the X and Y coordinate of that circle. And then W or H require you to put in numbers that will set the size of the width and the size of the height of that circle. So once you provide those values, the function takes in those values and set it to a specific variable within the commands underneath that function or use it to do some sort of a calculation. By providing x, y, w, h values, you're able to draw circles of a specific size at a location x and y coordinate. Going back to our default page here, you have seen these functions multiple times already, create canvas and background and also function setup and function draw. You can see that these functions, create canvas and background, have the syntax of calling functions, right? And setup and draw have the syntax of writing functions. You may have a question of 
hey, why do we not need to right create canvas and background, but you can call them while you never have to call setup and draw, but you can write commands underneath those functions. And the reason is because this is part of the built-in P5.js functions. We have talked about library before, right? Library is a set of code that someone else has written to make it easier for us to write our program. And within the P5.js library, there are all sorts of functions that have been written for us to be able to use to write and call functions that are easy for us to draw stuff on the screen. Same goes with create canvas and background or ellipse or fill or many of these functions. These have been written as part of the P5.js library already, and we can just call them when we want to use them. While setup and draw functions are functions that are also part of P5.js library, we don't need to call them actually when we click the play button. That's how we call set up and draw. We're not going to dive deep into what happens in the back end, but just know that the reason that we can write functions underneath set up and draw is because it's being called once we click play. Now, I want to show you three examples. Let's start with the first simplest one. So I'm going to write a function that prints something. I have to start with the word function and then the name, right? A parentheses and a curly bracket. First of all, where do I write this function? You write a function outside of the setup and the draw function, but you basically can write it anywhere. The second piece is that this print something function doesn't require a parameter. So I'm going to leave the parentheses blank. And then what I want to do is that when this print function is called, it is going to call a function called print and it's going to print the word hello. I know that this is a very redundant function because this print something is basically just calling another print function, but this is just to show you how functions are written and called. Okay, so I already write the function called print something and now I'm going to call and how I call it is that I'm going to call it underneath the draw function and I basically just need to write the name of that function and a semicolon here, then I click play and you see that the word hello is being called over and over again. Let's look at the second example. In this example, we have a sketch of a yellow ball that is bouncing around the canvas. It is a pretty simple program right now. It's not too long. So there's not a huge need to separate them into functions, but I just want to make a point of why you would want to group functions to make it easier to read. If we were to separate this function into three groups, we would see that, hey, these first two instructions are functions that draw a circle, right? We color the circle yellow, and then we draw an ellipse. These two lines basically move the circle, right? We move the location of x and y coordinates. And this piece of code basically check the boundary to make sure that, hey, when the ball touches the border, change the direction of the ball. So I'm going to write three functions called draw circle, move circle, and check boundary. So what do I need to do? Basically, I just need to write the word function, the name. These ones also do not need any parameter. And I'm just going to copy this piece here. The second function is move circle. And then I can just copy these two lines. And then the third function is called check boundary. And once I have all this, if I click run, nothing happens because I haven't called the functions. What I need to do now is that I need to call the functions, draw circle, move circle, and check boundary. And the result is the same as what you have seen before. When the functions are called, the computer goes look within your program. What are the commands underneath those functions? And they basically just call those. Right? So now what you can see is that draw circle, move circle, and check boundaries, basically just these instructions underneath those functions. Let's look at the third example. This third example is a little bit different in terms of the syntax because it is a function that can return a value. What we have written up until this point basically are functions that does something 
on the screen, right? Or draw something on the screen. But the function that I'm about to show you is basically going to take in an argument, do some sort of a calculation, and then return a value so that you can use that value in setting a variable or do some sort of other things that you want to do. The function that I want to write is called Celsius to far, and basically I want to calculate a Celsius value that is being given to me in the function and turns it into a Fahrenheit degree. So I'm going to write the word function, give it a name of Celsius to far, and then within this parentheses, I also need to take in a parameter, right? An argument. So I'm going to name it cell. And then within the function, I'm going to create a variable called far. And this far is going to be set to whatever value that is being calculated. So we get the value Celsius as an argument multiplied by 9 divided by 5 and plus 32. And this is the piece that is different from the syntax that I showed you before, which is the word return. So when this function is called, it takes in an argument, it do some sort of a calculation, it set that value to the variable far, and then I'm going to return that value far. And that's it. So when you want to call it, you just do the name, and then you put in an argument. Let's say I put in 30, and I click play. Hmm. Nothing is being printed or nothing is being returned. Why is that? It is because you ask it to return a value, but right now that value is not being printed or being shown anywhere. You can either set it to a variable and then do something with that variable, or you can just call print. And now you can see that 30 degrees Celsius is equal to 86 degree Fahrenheit. Consider the programs that you have written and then try to see if you can group some commands into functions to make it more readable and easy to understand.